15th ranker for this 2016 ex exam, Siddharth, and he'll share his strategy about political science. And even if you wish, you can ask some questions too. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think we should make this slightly interactive. Uh, uh, sir, how much time have they spent on political science? They've, have they just started or? They're planning to start. They've not yet started. Okay. Huh. Uh, so, let me just tell you what I did. Uh, I'll just tell you what I did in my first attempt and then, uh, which I didn't clear and I got only 183 for political science, which, okay. So I got only 183 in my first attempt, which is uh, which is a deal breaker, right? If you, I mean, this is like last year. This time 183 is would be very very low, uh, because general the marks have uh, marks that have been allotted they've increased this time. The last time 183 is pretty low too. So I got 183 um, for political science, GS also. I so my option is political science. So the corresponding GS paper is GS2. I got 69 in GS2 last time. So it was, you can see, see what a big disaster it was, my first means. Uh, I didn't study anything for GS3 and I got 94. So it's like, uh, so I knew that clearly something was wrong. Uh, now, uh, so I missed the mains cutoff by 50 marks. So that's, that's also a very huge uh, thing. So I, I, so I was in Delhi at the time. I had, so I had worked for a couple of years before I joined, uh, I came here for, I mean, came to Delhi for coaching and all that. So by that time I had run out of money, uh, so I thought now let's, I mean why spend so much money here uh, staying in Delhi, uh, I might as well go back home. I went back home, uh, then I'm starting to analyze where things went wrong. Uh, so in terms of strategy, I'll, uh, let me just give you a brief timeline first. Uh, the, I, the best bet for you, uh, you guys are all giving 2018, right? 2018, huh. so the best bet for you would be to complete one round of revision uh, at least three months before. Now you have enough time now. Uh, at least one, one, or one, two rounds of revision before uh, of political science, the entire syllabus of political science, as much as possible. Two months or three months before prelims, because three months before prelims, you, you will have to two or three months, depending on your comfort level with the prelims examination. You'll have to prepare thoroughly on prelims. Like your focus should entirely be on prelims. And now, three months before that, you must finish as much as political science as possible and you must also revise uh, because this is your first attempt. Uh, this is my second attempt so I, at least I had the luxury of you know at least knowing some of the thinkers, the key terms and all that. This is something that all of you must do uh, if you want to have a you know realistic chance of uh, cracking. See uh, beyond the point is pure luck, let me admit that at the start but uh, luck is not something you can count on. You, uh, you uh, I mean there, so if you put in some kind of work uh, you can at least be, you know, sure that huh, I've put in my work. Now, now let fate or luck, whatever, decide what the outcome is. Uh, so this is the this is the most safe and uh, rational strategy. Three months before prelims, please ensure that you at least complete one round of revision because after the the prelims is done with, two weeks you can chill. You can then you start uh, giving test series uh, and all that. You, it's time to assimilate whatever you've learnt and then. You know, it's time to become an answer writing machine for political science. That's, that's, that's going to be the objective for the next three months. So if you already learn the content beforehand, then you'll, you'll have a good chance of scoring a, a really good score. Uh, so, huh. so in my first attempt, uh, I realized that, you know, this is how I should go about things. Like two months before or three months before prelims, I should complete as much as political science as possible. Now, I started studying Indian, so I, I, first of all I picked the wrong top, topic to study. I picked Indian, uh, the paper one part two, Indian constitution, executive, legislature, judiciary, all that. And I am trying to be a constitutional scholar. I am referring to constituent assembly debates, I am going to old questions, I am reading so much stuff which ended up uh, being nothing. Like they asked very dynamic current affairs related questions, not theoretical constitutional questions, no, nothing of that sort. So two months I spent studying only the constitution, right, just the constitution and uh, so by the time prelims is over, I only know constitution and that too, hardly any question, no question came from that topic. So it's very important to first understand what is the pattern of the question paper, 
I I went through some of the old papers there. They were asking very static questions. I thought, huh, I should study the constitution in depth, uh, which is a very very. I mean, it was a disaster strategy. All the notes I made for my first attempt was not even useful for my second attempt. So, uh, what I like to so this is the background. How I how I messed up my first attempt. It's something that you should avoid completely. Avoid. Uh, so please uh, take a look at the question. So to start with, please take a look at all the question papers. Last, especially focus on the last five six years. How are they asking questions? Um, especially uh, the the part two of both papers are very very dynamic. Even part one of third, um, the second paper, the IR paper, even that is very very dynamic. It's just the first part which is a bit static uh, with political theory, political philosophy, and all that. So please, and first thing is to understand the syllabus and understand what what sort of questions are being asked. If you Do these two things. You will, you will, you will actually feel comfortable when you start studying topics. You will know what to read, what not to read. This is the first thing. Now, um, once once you understand the syllabus and you understand the kind of questions that are being asked, please uh, get uh, make a list of basic materials that you need for covering. It could be notes from uh, coaching classes, uh, could be your basic books like uh, Haywood and Andrew Haywood for international relations. Or Brian Nelson for political philosophy. There are these basic books. You will you will find them in. Uh, you listen to Topper Talks. You will get those books. I have an Excel sheet prepared where I have. I can share that with you, uh, where I've listed all the notes that I used for preparation. I can share that with you. So please get hold of this basic uh, notes uh, material and all that, and then you can sort of start preparing, uh, and make sure that you connect. Whatever notes that you have, make sure that that connects to the syllabus. If there's something that is completely outside the scope of your syllabus, please don't. I mean, there's no point in getting uh, that made. The I mean, notes made or you know, uh, getting it xeroxed from somewhere, and it's, it's it's a lot of waste of time. So please do this. Get basic material, and then you uh, begin your studies and all that. So this is the uh, this is like the basic uh, level of strategy that is required. Now. Uh, at, in in the first round please and yeah when you read please don't study like you know don't read a philosopher and you know just close the book and then try to recollect his points and all that don't do in in your first attempt you read the philosopher 5 6 times you'll get to know the ideas this is the this is the whole point uh, i so when i started studying lakshmi kant lakshmi kant is a basic i mean it's a it's like a foundational uh, text for even this uh, this course i mean this political science optional The first time I read Lakshmi Kant, I started by hitting the points like one, two, three, four. It doesn't work. I mean, you can keep doing that n number of times. It doesn't work. You, um, you, you study one day, you by heart, then you come back to it two months later, then you by heart again. It doesn't work. Just keep reading Lakshmi Kant continuously. Like once a week, you read one chapter, then again. So you have to do it consistently, and you have to do it throughout. Then only this recollection happens. Otherwise, huh? Um, so. So it's uh, it's a bit basic for them, right? So I think if if you have some uh, doubts, I think that would be a better way to go forward. Because I, how many of you are very comfortable with the syllabus? How many of you have read the? Huh? Talk about, uh, what topics we prefer to prepare? What kind of questions we should take up? These things. Okay. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So what else we should put the maximum or some columns? Okay. 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 Huh. Uh, so yeah, this is a current affairs heavy paper. Um, now, when you say Hindu doesn't cover everything, uh, it's true. Uh, Hindu does not cover everything, but it is also not advisable to go and read the uh, the articles and come in all the think tanks. Like you have Observer Research Foundation, you have uh, IDSA. You have so many think tanks um, publishing. Carnegie has now. I mean, recently, I think 2015. Since 2015, you have Carnegie India. A lot of articles uh, by a lot of people. There's like too much of data out there. You don't need that kind of data for this exam. The idea is not to be a research scholar, even in IR paper. See, the whole point. See, please think of this paper as a paper where you have to score marks and not improve your knowledge. If you can take this kind of approach, I think this would be the best way forward. the The objective always is to demolish demolish a question in front of you. Not, I mean, I I could be so. 
uh, in my first attempt, I used to have this feeling that, boss, I've, le- I've read so many things, I'm so knowledgeable, and any question comes, I can answer. That's not, that's not the case. You can gain, I mean, you can gain knowledge for self-actualization and all that, but your objective here is, your self-actualization here lies in scoring those 300 marks for political science. I mean, by last year's standards, 300 plus marks in political science. That should be your goal. For that, you need certain tools, like, so, sir always keeps saying, you have to uh, learn those technical terms. So, every scholar has certain technical terms, like, uh, veil of ignorance, uh, uh, by John Rawls. So, you have to ensure that for everything, so when you take your classes here, he will keep telling you these technical terms. Make sure you study those technical terms, that's, that's very important. Huh, this is for, even for dynamic part, uh, you can use some, some of the theories that you learn in your static portion, you can apply it here. But apply it in a very safe, I think he will tell you what to do. Uh, you can't, you're not, you're, not the, you're not a scholar. You can't just take one theory and apply it in an answer, giving a boss, this applies. No, that's not the way it works. If you've seen some other scholar apply a theory, theory that, so for example, when you read some of the articles in these think tanks, they will apply some the- realist theory uh, in, uh, in one article they mention. They'll apply realist theory in that, in that particular context, India-Pakistan context. Somebody will apply a realist theory. If he has applied, you can use, but don't, uh, don't try and show that you know some theories, it will look very naive. Uh, the, ant- the objective here is to look as sophisticated as possible, as diverse as possible and then answer. So specific answer to your question is, please don't go for a lot of think tanks. I used to do this mistake because I loved, inter- see I took this exam because of my love for international relations. I wanted to get into the foreign service. So it was a bit of a disadvantage for me because I couldn't just stop reading. So I will go to Carnegie uh, or some other website and I'll, throughout the day I'll keep reading articles. I'll keep reading one, one thread happens then there will be links below that. Uh, do you want to read this? And then I click on that and I read that. I keep reading, I keep reading and I, I don't know, like one day is gone. And uh, one day is gone I, and uh, uh, through, through the course of my reading I'll make copious notes also. Like I'll, uh, oh nice idea, wow, it's intellectually very stimulating and I make a lot of notes. I can't come back to these notes. I have other, other things to study the next day. It's just not possible. So this is a mistake I made. I think if I had not made this mistake and if I had done a more focused preparation on my second paper, I scored only 128 in my second paper. And there's, a, there's another funny story to how I ended up scoring 128, which I'll tell you later. But uh, I scored only 128. Uh, one of the reasons I ended up scoring only 128 other than uh, another mess up that I did on the day of the exam, which I'll tell uh, tell you later, was because I didn't do focus preparation on IR. Again, weakness was I loved IR. If you love a paper, please try and score good marks in that paper. Don't again the same thing that happened in the first attempt, gaining knowledge. This this mistake I made second attempt also. Uh, but on the balance, I don't think that's the reason I scored uh, very badly. The, there were some other reasons that happened on the day of the examination, which also affected my performance. Um, but yeah, please make sure that you follow one think tank, that's enough. Or for one region, you take one scholar or two scholars at max. Uh, America, I mean, you can take Raja Mohan, he is like all pro America, like we should, uh, we should have great relationship with America and then take some, somebody else who is a bit circumspect about relations with America. Uh, you can take someone like Sham Saran who is a bit skeptical, I mean, foreign, former foreign secretary, bit, bit skeptical but still positive. Don't, so, uh, whichever country you're dealing with, please don't take extremes, uh, extreme uh, viewpoints. When you read scholars, please don't tra- take extreme viewpoints, like nothing's going to work for this country. Uh, that is something that you can try. This is, this is what is recommended, but I used to take Bharat Karnad, who is a bit extreme. I used to quote him, uh, but, huh, but uh, I don't think I, uh, I lost marks because of that. I think those are the, uh, so I, if, when I quote uh, somebody like Bharat Karnat who is very extreme, I'll also quote someone like Nirpa, Nirpama Rao who is like very sane, very nice, like uh, very, very fe- feminist oriented uh, worldview which is peaceful and huh. so I take, so I try to balance things instead of focusing on the extremes. Um, so yes, the thing is, please keep your resources as to a minimum as possible. Your objective is to score marks. So, I mean, fo- follow Carnegie or IDSA or, I mean, IDSA would mean that you will get government's viewpoint. IDSA people don't write anything that uh, pisses off the government uh, substantially. So, uh, I think IDSA is a good thing to follow. But unfortunately, the problem with IDSA is, is very security oriented. 
that is the problem with idsa they have a great focus on security and uh, the focus on security with a combination of a deadly interest in security then you keep on reading idsa like from dawn to dusk you can read idsa but it doesn't work so please be emotionally a little detached from this paper and uh, only think about marks i know this is a very lame way to i don't know i mean people say you should prepare in a very integrated way the journey is important all that see the only thing is marks 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 and marks if you can think of see you you read an article just think what are your returns from this article will a question come from this particular topic that is something that you should always think about so that helped me so uh, i took bharat karna's name so whenever i read international relations current affairs i am always thinking uh, will i get a question from this topic this is one uh, so pakistan was a very prominent uh, you know pakistan was very prominent in news last year it was very likely that a question from pakistan comes right so i thought ha huh, what should i do if a question from pakistan comes so i had a list of scholars i had like four approaches by one was one was by bharat karnad one was by one was shashi tharoor's approach one was nirupama rao's very feminist uh, you know cultural civilizational ties sort of approach bharat karnad is was go and get them like we'll we'll fight a kautilyan putta yuddha with uh, pakistan we'll make make a uh, you know covert forces attack uh, you know should combine that with all that so ha i had four approaches i wrote all four approaches and i described uh, all four and i said uh, and eventually i said you know we should use a combination of all four approaches ha ah, this i mean obviously i don't know right i'm not the expert i can i can just quote the experts and say that was this is what people said Uh, so this is one another thing that uh, you should not do when you are writing ir paper try and not to sound like you are giving the solution like tell them uh, these are this is what the uh, these are what the scholars are saying and you think one of them is a reasonable approach don't make it sound like the others are bad and the other approaches are not non- uh, nonsense and this is the right approach try and make uh, try and make sure that uh, a bit of humility comes across that you don't Uh, because a uh, lot of times people who correct the papers are people who are like really really knowledgeable in international relation they they are like okay what is this kid saying right uh, this is not going to i am some 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 sometimes they are like so so every scholar has his or her own um, you know area of expert somebody is a realist they might like your answer if you are saying you know you should go for only a security solution but somebody who is a very liberal person would not like a purely security solution they will be like why aren't you trying other options why don't you economically in- integrate the two countries why don't you open up trades why don't you allow more people to people contact and all that so ha huh, so make sure that you are uh, your approach is very reasonable ha huh, this is what um, in terms of uh, uh, so yeah in terms of predicting questions is very important whenever you read news articles please ensure that you predict questions and the only way you can reasonably predict questions is if you are fully thorough with the kind of questions that are being asked in upsc that's very important no no matter how many test series you take here anywhere else you go for test series uh, each test series will have a certain bias of the person setting the question paper uh, so sir will have certain approach somebody else will have another kind of approach to setting the question paper however sincerely they try to match upsc's sort of uh, you know way of answering questions it may still be different you can't take that risk i'm i'm just telling you you can't take that risk so please go and see how upsc is asking questions and that too they they will not ask a question on set pattern that is also there so please try and understand what are the possible ways you should think about this paper that's the that i think is the main objective when you go back to question papers what are the different kinds of questions what are the different approaches you will have to make if you have to give answers these are these are some of the things that uh, you have to be very very uh, extremely mindful about before for even uh, starting studying uh, starting to study right uh, now i'll just give you a brief on uh, paper 1 part a paper 2 part uh, paper 1 part b etc etc now on paper 1 part a it's a it's a very static paper here you have to ensure that you know all the technical terms veil of ignorance um, you know pop, uh, general will of the people so there are so many things that you will learn as you take start taking classes you will learn a lot of lot of these technical terms now make sure you know all the technical terms just by heart if you can't remember just sit in ratta maro like you people say in hindi like uh, i mean don't mind my bad accent but ha huh. just just by heart those technical terms one if 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 a scholar comes to so you're not by hearting ideas you're only by hearting technical terms ideas you 
uh, you develop it a bit more organically. Now, when a scholar comes to your mind, make sure that all the technical terms sort of pop up, like a digital display here, like one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you can, I mean, do it however you want. You want to draw pictures of a scholar and, you know, take ideas. However you want to memorize it, memorize it, but please ensure that you know technical terms. That's like the most important thing. And I'll tell you, and this is a, this is a message I got uh, by watching his classes, one of the uh, important messages that I got. So, in my first paper, that's a paper I scored reasonably well. I scored 180, 164 in the first paper. There was this question on human essence, Marxist view on human essence or something like, something like that. Now, human essence, so if I had not known the importance of technical terms, I would have answered that question. Think, saying that, ah, I mean, something re related with human essence, I will write, I will connect it to something that Marx said, thinking that, okay, this could be what Marx meant as human essence, and I would have written an answer. First attempt, I would have definitely gone for that question, because I know Marx. I don't know human essence, that's a separate matter, but I know Marx, right? I can connect that with human essence, whatever. I know what human means, I know what essence means, so I will manufacture an answer. Similarly, there was a question on Rawls' uh, democratic equality. Huh. Democratic equality. I, 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 maybe I've read it somewhere, but I, I, do, I don't remember. Now, I know most of the things that Rawls said. And I know that he's, he is for justice, he is for equality and all that. I can connect. But I knew that, boss, if I write this question, if I don't know exactly what he said about democratic equality, I'm, I'm gone. So I didn't write both those questions. But I wrote Hannah Arendt. I knew, I knew Hannah Arendt out and out. Like every technical term that she ever said, I, I, I knew. At least for the, not ever said, but at least for the exam point of view, I knew, I knew all the technical terms. Uh, I knew how to connect Arendt with Aristotle, blah, 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 all, all that. I knew Arendt out and out. So I wrote, I wrote about Arendt, I skipped these questions. And I went for uh, the part two answers. So this is a call that you will have to, and in retrospect, I didn't, so last, for 35 marks, I, I had only 10 minutes to write last 35 marks. So out of those 35 marks, I would have probably got 10 to 15 marks. 10 marks maybe. So 154 I'm scoring out of 215. I did that because I chose those questions where I knew all the technical terms. This is something that you have to be very careful about. Please don't try to be the scholar. This, uh, that, is the, that is the one uh, safe bet that you can take. Uh, again, let me tell you, all this uh, gyan that I'm giving you is based on assumptions. I don't know who corrected my answers. I don't know what they liked about my answers. Certainly, I know for a fact that it's not my handwriting. My handwriting is very bad. Other than my, I don't know what worked. I don't know what didn't work. So these are the assumptions that, reasonable assumptions that I'm making. That uh, I didn't answer the questions where I didn't know technical terms. Uh, even though I knew a lot about those scholars or that, those thinkers. But I went for those questions where I knew, huh, I knew the right ideas, I knew the right scholars. This is something that you will have to be very careful about. Uh, yeah, so technical terms is the most important thing in the first section. Again, it's, it's very preliminary, that's why I'm, I don't think there's much point in uh, going into much deeper uh, content in the first paper. Now, paper one, part two. Uh, so I use basic co coaching material, basic notes and things like that. Then Brian Nelson was, uh, for thinkers I use Brian Nelson. Uh, then I think this is enough. Uh, basically, this is enough. Uh, then you, uh -huh, then you will get the notes, right? Mm, this is more than enough. Uh, but, uh, but I personally had used a lot more materials. I had used there was there was some. So, so basically, what I did was I answered all the previous year's questions that were that were asked uh, from from time immemorial, right? This is a static paper. So uh, all, there's this booklet. There's this booklet you will get topic-wise question. Paper. I, I I answered all that. I, I didn't answer that, like, I didn't write, write them down. I made notes on Evernote. I, I'm, a, mm, I'm a laptop guy, I'm not a, you know, I'm not much of a, I don't, anyway, I can't read my own handwriting if I read, the, read it for a second. I have no idea how they managed to give me so much marks. Uh, like I said, luck is also a factor in this paper. Uh, so I used to type everything down in Evernote. So first time I answer all these questions, my quality of answers are very low. I come back to it, I revise it. I, this is first time I didn't, first attempt I didn't have time to revise. So second time I, so first time I'm revising it, I know the answer quality is not good. So I will take some content out. I try to, uh, I make notes upon those notes. So ha, huh. so answering all the questions on the pre, of the previous years and all that itself covers a lot of ground. 
uh, that itself covers a lot of ground. But please make sure you are done with your basic syllabus before you try this. Otherwise, no, no, this is, I didn't answer those questions for answer writing practice. I answered those questions for content. Ha, huh, basically for points. Uh, so, ha, huh, so through the course of that, I had to use a lot of other materials. These basic materials didn't satisfy me or my ego, whatever. Ha, huh, so I had to, I diversified, I referred to a lot of, a lot of other materials and ha. Huh. This level of depth of preparation is actually not necessary. You, uh, again, like, like I said, the objective is to score marks. So you, please find the balance between how much time you have. So, like, I love spending time in front of the, in, in my room. I didn't have any other distraction. When I was in, when I was at home, my mother would not even disturb me for, you know, getting some sabzi from the market. Like, like, they'll just leave me alone. You sit in your room, do whatever you want. If you have this kind of a, uh, you know, um, you know, atmosphere at home, you are not disturbed, you don't have friends. All my friends are doing very well. They're all, uh, I, like I said, I finished, oh, I finished engineering like five years ago. So now all my friends are well settled. Everyone's doing, uh, no, one's, no one's in Kerala anymore. I'm from Kerala, no one's in Kerala anymore. So I don't have that distraction also. I can just sit in front of, uh, in my room and keep watching YouTube videos or just, and I don't sleep also. I have a bad sleeping problem. I can't, I can't sleep for more than four hours continuously. This is another issue that I have. So ultimately I'm spending so much time in front of YouTube or in front of uh, the books. The studying is very less. Studying is six to eight hours. That's it. But then, ha, huh, these extra readings, lot of documentaries, lot of videos, lot of ep Rajya Sabha TV. I mean, all the shows in Rajya Sabha TV. Ha, huh, I used to spend a lot of time. So if you have a lot of time, you can invest in doing all this. But if you don't have time, if you are somebody who's little more sane, you want to have a balanced life, you want to go to the gym or do something like that, you want to meet friends, you want to watch one movie a day, you have that kind of schedule, then if, if that's, see, you ultimately you have to be happy when you prepare. You have to remain uh, in a, uh, in, you know, you have to be at ease with yourself. This is the most important thing because it's one year, I don't, so people right out of college may, can still study like very well. Uh, I, I went back to studies after three years and second attempt it was like four years. Then it's very difficult for, you know, even if you want to, I mean, the goal of becoming an IS officer, uh, IFS officer, my, uh, that is like a, dis that seems a very distant dream. What do you do for today? How do I study the same things that I studied again and again? Here you, ha you need some support system to, you know, sort of ensure that you stay happy throughout the course of your preparation. So. Ha, huh, this is so very personal. Can you manage time wherein, now I have all the answers, I can share that with you. Uh, you may find it uh, useful, you may not find it useful. So that's, that's like, I have it in, uh, uh, I have it in on online digital format, which is easily shareable. So that's not a problem. Uh, but again, reading my notes is my way of thinking. It's always advisable if you can develop your own way of thinking about how to tackle a question, answer. There's no set pattern, right? You can't just by heart, a sir might tell you an approach on how to tackle the answer, but if it does not come from within, it's, it really won't reflect well. It's only when, so you, can, you can take, incorporate elements of what sir says, but you will also have to develop your own way of writing the answer so that you are extremely, it's not, uh, so uh, when you go for the exam on that day, when you see a question, it should not come as if you are forced to write that paper. It should just come naturally to you. Your introduction, the middle conclusion, where you will quote scholars, where you will put in a, you know, punchline. All the, all these things you will have to develop yourself by uh, doing answer writing practice. And in political science, if you don't write, if you don't do answer writing practice, it's 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 difficult unless you are a genius. Huh. And all these things I'm saying is not for geniuses. Geniuses can crack the exam with you know three hours of preparation, no test series, first time seeing a question paper. Never, never seen a previous year's question. Uh, some, there are geniuses like that. I'm not talking about exceptions. I'm talking about average people who are struggling to get by with their preparation and all that. I'm talking about average, uh, normal people. Huh. Mm. So yeah, uh, so your question was basically materials, resources. Huh. Uh, so yeah, I had to, because I did this answer writing, my, my resources were like too much. I had a lot, a lot of resources uh, to deal with. But... Uh, but yeah, but that's not advisable. Like I said, this is the advance. Please finish your basic stuff. Basic coaching material you first finish and basic books like Brian Nelson. I'll share that list with you, what, what, I, what I used. 
uh, once you're done with the basic material, then you can go for all these um, extreme stuff. But, huh. but you don't need extreme to score well in this paper. Okay, uh, it's, it depends on your, what is the level of satisfaction you have with your preparation. I will not be satisfied with coaching material. That's my problem. I will, I will feel that, oh, there, there are voids. I need more ideas. Because I don't have, yeah. First reading. First reading of like you said. No, 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 no. So you tried in the second reading or uh, uh, huh. so uh, I tried all this answer writing uh, practice other than constitution. Constitution I did it in precedent itself. Uh, in uh, okay. So by the time I was giving my second attempt, I fairly had an idea about what the syllabus was. This is a luxury that you guys don't have. Uh, so my so because I was very lazy in studying, I thought I would just, so a lot of topics I just answered questions. And I thought, ha, huh, I will cover a lot of topics through these questions. But this is not a very, this is not, this is not the best approach. Uh, so this was because I was pretty lazy in studying. I, I just didn't want to read Haywood again. I was like, boss, I've read Haywood once, I can't read Haywood again. It's just a lot of, it's not, uh, Haywood, I don't know, it, again, this is based on your comfort level. Will you find it easier to ha read Haywood? Then please read Haywood. Will you find easier to read those basic materials that you will get from coaching? Then do that. I think that is the that is the approach. But huh, if you want to write these answers in an answer writing mode, then you should uh, you should have covered the syllabus beforehand. Syllabus, no, at least the topics beforehand. Huh. But my objective was different. My objective was to get information. Ah, yes, because I did multiple revisions. I came back to it again and again and again, like many times, so like what, five, six times. So what do you, uh, those uh, answers your books? Huh. And apart from that, did you make any other notes? I made a, so like, I have a lot of notes for every topic, including art and culture. Like, ha. Huh. So I'm, I'm, I was a note maker in the first, first, during my first attempt. And some of that residual note makerness carried forward in the second attempt also, but ha. Huh. So the, my personal strategy was make a lot of notes, try and revise, but at least in second attempt, I revised as much as I, I can, most of the notes. Hmm. Okay. Huh. Obviously. Huh. Nee, nee. So I love myself a lot. Uh, and uh, I, so so the thing is, I when I see these notes, no, uh, I'm seeing a very sophisticated notes, uh, sophisticated set of notes. I only take te terms. I don't take sentences. I can't frame those sentences in my head. Sir's notes, the uh, notes, I can't frame his sentences. It's just not possible for me. But I'll take all the terms. I will take, uh, for example, uh, I'll give you an example. There's this. Uh, there's this huge, uh, what is justice is something that, I mean, a lot of scholars will say this is justice, that is justice. I will just take one, I will just take the core idea from each scholar. Rest, I will be, rest of the words I'll use myself. I can't use anybody else's words. I just can't use that for any paper. Some people find it very comfortable in using other, other sentences and phrases. If you're that kind of person, you should go for that. Don't waste time making notes. It's just, just a lot of effort. Uh -huh. But I, I just cannot think of, uh, I cannot take sentences from anywhere else and frame, uh, frame my answers. Terms I can take. This is, this is something, so uh, equality, uh, Amartya Sen says, uh, equality is equality of biological functioning. Everyone should biologically function the same. That, that sort of input everyone should get. So I will, I will memorize this biological functioning. Or, uh, right, I, I don't remember the exact terms now, but huh, I, would, I would remember this. And I would remember basically what is the idea that he's talking about. And I'll put it in, into my own words. So when I put it into my own words and I read them, I can, I can, I, uh, I can recollect that. So this is my personal strategy. So making notes for me, it was a, that was the only way I could um, do well in the paper one. That's like the, the only way. So Brian Nelson, when I read Brian Nelson, uh, I can't frame Brian Nelson's sentences. So I didn't make notes on Evernote for Brian Nelson. What I did was, uh, on Br my Brian Nelson, on the sidelines, there's enough space, okay, Brian Nelson gives you a lot of space on either side, if you've seen that note, if you've seen that book. So I would just take, uh, I would just draw uh, some lines and I would just write down the technical terms. And I would, I would underline the important sentences. So 
when I'm doing my third or fourth round of revision, I will look at the technical term, I'll look at the sentence. Technical term, sentence. Techn technical term, sentence. This is how I study. Instead of reading the whole, I mean, Brian Nelson says a lot of things. You can't, you just can't frame sentences the way he frames it. I can't do it. Maybe you can. You have to find, so again, like I said, it is about finding your comfort level. Where is your comfort level? And no, comfort level should not be satisfying your ego, like being, being, a law, being the most knowledgeable person. If that is your comfort level, then that is a dangerous com comfort level to have. Like I said, my first attempt, that was a bad comfort level to have. But in terms of studying and reproducing what you want to study, where is your comfort level? You, you like reading some notes and you, uh, you, know, you don't even want to do an underline. If that's the way it works for you, then it, you should go ahead with that. But huh, please find your own way of doing this. That is my suggestion. I can, I can maybe, uh, I can show, I, have, I have the notes with me right now. I can, I can show it to you uh, how I've uh, prepared these notes. But, uh, and maybe once I reach home, I can also show you how, from, from written notes, I, have, I also use written notes. How I uh, framed, uh, uh, I mean, how I made the written more, uh, notes more readable for me. So how I would write technical terms in the side and how I would underline sentences and connect. All that I can, I can just take pictures and I can send it across to sir and maybe he can share that with you. But that's my very personal way of studying. So now uh, I'll just move on to paper one part two. Now paper one part two, like I said, my first year's experience was completely with constitution. Like constituent assembly debates, man. It's like, who, who I mean, no, somebody who studies the constitution will study that. Constituent, constituent assembly debate. Somebody who's writing Pratap Bhanu Mehta might once in a while look at constituent assembly debates, but Maybe sir will. Uh, sir is an encyclopedia himself, so maybe he will. But otherwise, I mean, for please, uh, for us, it's really not required. So any article I see in the Constitution, I try and go back to Constituent Assembly. How was? How did this article come about? I did all this in my first attempt. Well, it was completely worthless, except for one question that came in GS2 this year. So while I was trying to be a constitutional scholar in my first attempt. I used to, ah, like I said, I have a, an addiction for YouTube. So I am trying to learn about basic structure of the constitution. And I used to have a lot of debates with my close friends. I had three close, I mean two close friends who were preparing alongside me. So some, something happened and we, we were debating the basic structure of the constitution, right? So now I want to study everything and I want to beat them, right? That's my objective, not scoring marks for the exam. Misplaced priorities. Now I am studying everything about the basic structure. How? How Keshavanda Bharati case was argued? Uh, what are the things that Nani Palkewala said to sort of emotionally blackmail the judges, saying that boss, you how? Uh, so he did. He used to. I mean, you should uh, after the preparation is done and after you get your service allotment, one thing that you should do is uh, read what uh, uh, Nani need uh, read uh, Nani Palkewala's case. What what did he tell the judges to tell them that there is a basic structure in the constitution which did, which didn't exist? How did he convince or how did he give that cue to the judges? It's a, it's a fascinating um, exchange with, uh, with the judges. Uh, so I'm reading this and I'm trying to figure out more and more about the constitution. So I will just go, go on YouTube and I'll type good speech constitution, uh, Indian constitution. Something like this I did and I came across this video of uh, Justice Rohinton Nariman who's, who gave the verdict for Shriya Singhal, 66A. He was the one who struck it down. He's a Supreme Court judge. He was a senior lawyer earlier. He is Pali Nariman's son. And uh, so there was, an, uh, there was a talk for 55 minutes, or I think two part video on ninth schedule. This is just about ninth schedule, okay? I'm trying to be a scholar, right? And I don't care about the exam or I don't care about the marks. So I watched that video. I watched the part one, I watched part two. And I know what ninth schedule, why ninth schedule was incorporated. Um, uh, so, why, why was that amendment brought in? Uh, what, what did judiciary not do in IR Koilho case? What, what should a judiciary have done according to him? Etc, etc. And look what happened in GS2 last year. IR Koilho case. Now, this is, uh, this is, this is luck. I mean, this is again luck, right? So I knew, so this was also there in Lakshmi Kant. By the way, if you read, you didn't, you didn't have to watch a, a one, one, one and a half hour video. Ten, ten minutes of Lakshmi Kant reading would have done. But it's very unlikely you, I, somebody like me picks up IR, IR Kulu from Lakshmi Khan. Lakshmi Khan, everything is there. Date from which it is applicable. 
it's from Keshavanta Bharti's uh, judgment that uh, the the clause for I mean the basic structure for nine schedule that applies only from 1973. All this is there. Perfect information is there in uh, this thing, uh, Lakshmi Khan. But I knew why the why the judgment came, why, where, what. I knew a lot of so I could read, uh, I could write a good answer. So from 69 I went to 109 this year. So like 40 marks. That's like a that's like a huge improvement. This is I think in GS. Uh, it is only in GS2 that I have slightly better marks. Everything else I have average. average. I mean, like, toppers have 135 for GS1 this year. Uh, so, uh -huh. my distance to frontier in GS2 is a little less for me. But for other papers, huh. So, so these things are, so th again, luck. But this, these are things you can't rely on. Uh, so, yeah. So, I was trying to do all this in my first attempt and I got nowhere. And I got 69 in GS2 also. This year, I decided to ensure that my I mean, Lakshmi Kant will be my my girlfriend for the next one year. So I read Lakshmi, Lakshmi Kant at least I don't know 20, 30 times. I'm telling you, 20, 30 times I've, I've read Lakshmi Kant. Uh, some 15 times, 15 to 20 times maybe in the second attempt. I just kept reading Lakshmi Kant. Not all the I mean, not the chapter on citizenship. That you don't have to read 20, 30 times. But ha, huh, fundamental rights. That section I've read again and again and again. I've read that many, many times. So ha, huh, so. Combined for one first and second attempt, I would have read 20, 30 times. Lakshmi Kant, 20 times maybe in the second attempt. So, Lakshmi Kant is going to be very, very helpful because you will you will get the articles, you will get the names of the articles which you can quote. Even if you don't quote the names of the articles, it's not that you will not lose marks. Okay, you will lose marks. It's okay. Even if you don't quote, ha. Huh, if if they are asking about a very specific fundamental right and you don't know the article that relates to that fundamental right, yes. But then. There are so many articles you can quote if you if you read Lakshmi Khan many many times. It will not give you extra points, but your answer will look very clinical. And like oh, this this boy or this girl means business. That's the kind of impression you will get if you quote articles correctly. And don't just keep quoting articles one two three. You will write in the first four lines. You will write so many articles. That's not the way. Make sure you insert the right things at the right place in your answer. Let it sound, let, let it look a bit natural that you are quoting the articles at the right place. So, Lakshmi Kant helps. That's that's like the base for uh, paper two, part, uh, sorry, paper one, part two. Then there is this book called Oxford Companion to Politics in India. Uh, that is something that I, I read. Uh, uh, initially, I never read this in my first attempt. I had this book all along with me. Even in my attempt to be a scholar, I didn't read this book. But in my second attempt, when I read it, there are so many topics in the syllabus which are there as uh, you know essays in this book. For example, party system. Party system. There are at least two articles uh, in that uh, in that book where you where I actually understood how the party system fragmented. What are the views of different scholars on how the system fragmented? Uh, and this question came like last year. Party system came. Party system came both here and also in GS2. Uh, so, ha. Huh. So this uh, sort of benefited me very much in. So this from this book again you get a lot of technical terms, many many. But these are not technical terms like those of political philosophers. Uh, these are technical terms of good scholars. Maybe some some of the people who are co correcting the correcting your copies may know these scholars, may not know these scholars. But at least you can sound sophisticated. But and when you write technical terms, please also take the names of the scholars that you use. Just don't uh, put those technical terms as as if they are your terms. That is again one danger. Uh, so make sure that ha. Huh, so and I also made a list of all technical terms, all scholars. I had made an Excel sheet basically to get this done. Uh, so ha. Huh, so there are so many things I uh, learned uh, from uh, Oxford Command to Politics. Things like patronage, democracy. Uh, I think it's Sanjeev Barua who said that you know some question on federalism. I will say federation building is the right project for India, not nation building. I, I will not say that, I will say Sanjeev Barua said that. So like that, so many different punchlines from so many scholars, everything I got from this book. Uh, and please don't read the book uh, like from first page to last page, in case you are planning to read the book. Only read the chapters which are relevant from, uh, from the syllabus, you will understand. It, it is very easy, if you take the syllabus and if you take the content page, sorry, the index page of the of uh, OPCI, you will know exactly which articles to read and which articles not to read. Uh, because it's very, mm, I mean, uh, it's very clearly worded. So that's not a problem. If you read that book, you will get so many, so many punchlines, so many ideas that you can quote. So I, w I had prepared GS, uh, sorry, paper one, part A, very well. 
and because i could not i didn't have the confidence to go for these questions like human essence and democratic equality i had to end up writing so my strategy was to take three questions from so there are uh, you know the have you have you, seen, have you how many of you seen the question paper for political science okay ha huh, so you should uh, see the question paper as soon as possible in in, in there are two sections you have to answer and there are um there are uh, three plus so two plus one ha huh. there are um there are two 50 mark questions that you will have to choose from one section and one 50 mark question that you you can choose from another section that's 150 mark 100 marks is compulsory from both sections you have to write uh, write 50 50 marks each the first question is compulsory then in from one of the sections you can choose two questions which contain 50 marks and then another sec, uh, another from the second section you can choose one my strategy was to go for two questions in uh, paper 1 part a so i will write for paper 1 part a 150 marks and 100 marks for paper 1 part b eventually i had to end up writing for 150 marks in paper 1 part b and not the other one because i didn't know the technical terms there here i used a lot of technical terms here whatever patronage democracy federation building this that lot of stuff and uh, the party system came i knew a lot of technical term duverger's law how it see at the end of the day even uh, political science i don't know if they expect a very correct answer from us when they say how did party system broke uh, fragmented i don't think they expect us to tell them exactly how it broke uh, fragmented just just that you know you you tell them everything that people have said in a nutshell you know he has said this he has said that he has uh, blah, blah 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 you you give them that basic idea then uh, then then i think you're done I, the the closer you go for correctness of your answers i think the farther you are, you are from the marks because i don't know in political science there's a correct answer to any question i mean everyone's perspective is very very different so so don't worry about all this take take these terms take these punch lines and use them in a reasonably intelligent way so that you know they don't they don't think you're naive or cocky both you shouldn't look naive or and you shouldn't look cocky both so just you use it in a very safe manner so that's that's my uh, suggestion for paper 1 part b but newspapers is everything for this for this section newspapers whatever is happening around you please connect that with the syllabus governor question was so i mean it was like out there last time is there and i didn't and i didn't prepare that well my my bad governor was out there it was a sure question last time i i didn't prepare that as big mistake that i made was i didn't uh, so like i said 50, 35 marks i wrote in the last 10 minutes if i had prepared that question i could have done it much better i could have written the points 1 2 3 4 5 one of the one of the very bad mistakes i made i was generally good at predicting questions last year this is a question that i somehow missed so again even for gs and for uh, your political science paper you can predict questions governor was out there it was a mistake if you didn't prepare for that question like i did uh, but ha huh, it, it did not penalize me that much anyway i had very little time to write that uh, question so ha huh, uh, so reconnecting the um, the newspaper events with the syllabus is very important so that you can predict questions so that's about 1 uh, and 2 now paper 2 Uh, is the IR IR paper paper two part one uh, paper two is the IR paper part one is theory. Now unlike the theory in paper one, which is very static, here it's a little more little. It gives you a little more flexibility. From even from the uh, even in the st- static part, there are a lot of things uh, which are of cu- uh, current importance. WTO, uh, you know, uh, North South relationship, etc. So they can ask you any question. it uh, from the paper although you can expect some theories com- on comparative politics and all that some standard theories are expected but again please make sure that the uh, newspaper reading is sharp because they might pick up something from the newspaper and ask uh, on because and some of the topics are repeated in uh, part a and part b nam is there both ways nam is there india's india's nam policy and nam in general nam is non aligned movement for people who may not know Uh, so ha huh. so this is this is something very important so please ensure that and here again the key is technical terms here the technical terms are much more because your your dream is scholars not philosophers they are philosophers uh, the ideas when they are taught they are taught in a very logical way you can see from the start it, it it's like a flow but here it's just you have to cram yourself with technical terms and try and stay one step ahead of your uh, you know competitors like so when when you talk about balance of power 
uh, sorry, uh, when you talk about something like security dilemma. So there is, uh, uh, there is a, there is a concept of security dilemma of classical realist, uh, so, sorry, neo realist, neo classical realist. Uh, so you will learn few scholars, important scholars like Mearsheimer, John Mearsheimer has said something about security dilemma. Uh, Kenneth Walls has said something about security dilemma. Everybody will write these two scholars. Uh, like uh, they know. Somebody might go to a neoclassical scholar and they will stop there. You should go beyond that in my opinion so that you get that one extra mark. So I had done proper research on security dilemma. I had, I got some other important scholars. Then I also got, uh, then you should also, you can also try and write, uh, write something about insecurity, insecurity dilemma which is applicable not to first world countries. Uh, I mean you can also say that oh all this is based on first world countries. You should also look beyond that. There is a third world uh, security predicament blah blah blah. Just that is only one line. Don't again deviate from what is being asked. Just tell them that there are other things also. This is my approach. I try to, uh, I, I would attack the question but I will also add some extra content. Uh, I will try and add scholars which have advanced the idea beyond what is immediately asked. How Security dilemma is not just Walls and Mearsheimer. Mier there are many other scholars who have taken security, who have broken down security dilemma into parts and have analyzed it. So, huh, try and do this. But again, here is where you have to take help from sir or whoever is guiding you uh, to ensure that you don't spend much time uh, doing all this. I spent a lot of time doing this. Uh, which could, which again, if I had cut down, if I had rationalized my time distribution in paper 2, I could have been in a much more, much better situation in getting uh, more than 128. Um, so, huh. but again, I spent a lot of time studying all this, which uh, didn't give me the kind of returns that I should have got. Uh, that is about paper 2 part 1. Again, technical terms, uh, little bit of current affairs, uh, but, huh, but keep your eyes and ears open. And please ensure that you cover the breadth of the syllabus. Last year they asked so many questions, arms, uh, disarmament. Uh, last year they've just gone out and stretched, uh, stretched us completely. They've asked from everything that can come from the syllabus. So if you think, uh, because the syllabus is so vast, generally we have a ten tendency to study few important things that are there in Haywood or that are there in that second book, Bayless and Smith. We leave out so many other things that are there in the syllabus. So please make sure that Haywood and Bayless and Smith is not enough. In, in case you are thinking that, that those two books will help you clear the paper, paper to part A, the way it, uh, the question paper came last time, even the, uh, the time, uh, the, the one before the last year, they are asking things from syllabus. So please, please make sure that you have at least one page for every topic in the syllabus so that you know if a question comes you can just write something. Then you can always use scholars. Uh, you will uh, all these ideas will be discussed by scholars as they go. But please make sure you have dedicated content. One page is enough. Don't you don't have to again try and be a uh, an expert on every topic. Mm, uh, so, huh. so when you read Bayless and Smith, this is a, there, there is an issue here. You will try. You those are very scholarly articles. Unlike Haywood, who gives you a basic idea, ba Bayless and Smith is written by um, some of the best scholars in, in in that particular field. So again, it's a lot of reading. So please convert Bayless and Smith into a very capsule form and revise only that. Study only that. So just, just by heart if you can. Just those few ideas instead of wasting a lot of time. This is a mistake that I made. That is my suggestion to you in paper 2 part A. Now paper 2 part B is the most chilled out section. Uh, it's that thing that, you, that she was talking about, Hindu. Uh, ah, there are these determinants of foreign policy, that, that initial static part that you may have to cover. This time a question came directly from that. But otherwise it's a manageable thing. It's largely current affairs based. But when you read current affairs based, please make sure that you read and re you uh, make notes in a way that you can answer those questions. That is the that is the most important thing. Your notes should be in a way that you can answer the question. I, I start reading um, articles from ORF or Carnegie. I spend like hours and hours. I will make so, so much notes. Then when I come back to that, I'm like, okay, how do I now make sense of these notes? How do I shorten them again? So this is a problem that you may face. Uh, you can avoid that if you keep your resources to minimum. And there's this Oxford, uh, um, I think, handbook on Indian foreign policy. I had covered, I had, I had uh, studied some some topics from there that you can use. But again, 
um, again, this is this is a bit advanced. Uh, so nobody asks questions like explain the dynamics of India US relationship. They will ask it in a specific context, like they asked last year. You know, we have not managed. I, I I'm forgetting the question. They will ask you very specific question. In that backdrop, you'll have to answer. So there's no point in studying all the history of what in, we did with US from 1947 to. Uh, uh, there's no point in remembering everything. Ha! Huh, have a basic idea how in Cold War our relationship was in, in a certain way, after Cold War our relationship was a certain way, now it is like this. Develop a basic idea. I had studied everything like what happened in 60s, 70s, 80s. Uh, really not required. Maybe it will help me when I join the service. That's another thing. But how many of you want to join a foreign service here? Okay. Are you from Kerala? Yes? Uh, so, uh, so that happens from our part of the world. We are very pro foreign service. So this time, top three from Kerala all have chosen first. Their first option is foreign service. So, uh, yeah. So, so unless you have that kind of an interest, but again, brother, let me just warn you: don't. You have to get into the service before you start showing your knowledge in the service, right? So. The objective is those uh, 300 marks will get will get you closer to the service than your our love for international relations. So make sure that you sort of mellow down your preparation in a way that you can just answer those 20 questions, 20, 19 questions. That those are your that is your objective. Huh, so please make sure again resources are minimum, but huh, please make sure you cover every event. Don't miss. If if PM goes for a visit, please don't study all the agreements that he made. PM goes away, every, every visit will have hundreds of agreement. One agreement will always be on skill development. Like some uh, capacity building, all this will happen. So please don't study that. But huh, there are important, so some, if there is an important energy deal or a important, huh, line of credit, uh, military training exercises, this that's not very important. But huh, line of credit to a country like Bangladesh for defense, that becomes important. But African countries, this country, that country, uh, not not really important. Skill development, uh, uh, cultural ties, uh, Buddha, this era. I mean, I don't know. Again, again, it's very country specific. But huh, generally, they don't ask questions about India-Mongolia relations. Generally, generally. Uh, so, huh. so leave out these basic things. But if there's an important energy deal, if if there is something new that uh, India is doing with a particular country. Then please, uh, please ensure that you uh, you learn what what that new thing is. That's the that's the important thing. But uh, if you keep on, uh, and then one thing that helps is have a rough idea what the trade uh, trade figures between at least important countries. What does India Russia trade? Because you can actually use that uh, to say that okay, we are not doing well in trade. If you don't do well in trade, there's very little you can do. Security will not drive your relationship. For example, in Russia's case, we are we are diversifying. We are buying from Israel. We have, that that is that that has Russia worried. So there are certain strains in the relationship because we want to diversify. One of the reasons we uh, uh, one of the reasons why th there is a strain in relationship is because our trade relations with Russia is so weak. We don't have proper banking channels. There are a lot of issues uh, for our trade with Russia. The way Russian companies operate. Is very, I mean, it's completely different from the way, sorry, uh, that uh, our companies operate here in India. So there, the system is not that transparent. Competitive bidding and all, they're like, boss, we can't do. Putin generally assigns companies for us. We, we can't do this. So there are these genuine issues uh, for our economic relations with Russia to improve. On the other hand, companies in Germany or companies in US have different issues with us. They don't, they, they don't have a problem in terms of. Uh, how they can go for competitive bidding, all that is fine. But they have other issues. They have issues with our red tape. So that's why with Germany we have an agreement where we'll give them fast track clearance. So we have provisions like that. What? So, ha. Huh, so make sure the economic relation is something that you should always highlight because that is the one thing that will always drive countries close. Uh, one of the reasons that is being often quoted by scholars is that the economic interdependence between China and United States is so much that war is. I mean. You can't think of a possible war. That, that is the one. So liberal scholars say, uh, will say that, you know. Uh, uh, so Mir Shaima says that China's rise will not be peaceful. China cannot rise peacefully. That's what John Mir Shaima says. That if China tries to be a hegemon, 
uh, US will not uh, tolerate uh, peer competitors, something bad will happen in South China Sea or whatever. But others will say that no, economic interdependence is so huge that you know it's just not possible. And they'll say, look at what Donald Trump is doing. Donald Trump said that boss, we will take China out from here. I mean, island building is bad. There's that. What what is he doing now? He's trying to cut deals with with, uh, with China. So, huh, economic relations between countries is very very important. Even if you're not a uh, not a liberal, you don't believe in economic interdependence. That's that's fine. But it's a fact. Uh, it's something that you can always put put across. Is what I'm saying. Maybe you think uh, realism is what is is how the world the way the world works. But huh, but make sure you know what is the trade relationship. What is the volume of trade? What is the volume of trade? I mean, India's volume of trade with Russia is not much. Sometimes it's even lower than the trade relationship we we have with Iran. In some years, sometimes even half of it, no? Half half of the trade we've had with Iran. Just imagine our. Supposed to be our, uh, I mean, every kid in India knows who India's best friend is, according to Prime Minister Modi, right? That's what he said when he went to. He also said that to one one old friend is better than two new friends, and you know exactly who, who the two new friends are, right? Uh, so, ha. Huh. Uh, despite in spite of all this, we are trading only half of what we are trading with Iran in many years. Why? Why is it so? So that is where there are no. Uh, so recently, Sham Sharan uh, wrote an article saying that people. So the especially the left-leaning uh, scholars are like so mad that we are going closer to US. We are neglecting Russia. So that is why Russia is going to Afghanistan and uh, you know cutting deals with Taliban. Russia is you know Russia is not taking our security concerns into all, all that. So uh, uh, people are so concerned. I think Sham Sharan wrote a very reasonable article just few days back in the Hindu. Saying that there are no real drivers in India-Russia relationship, unlike the case with the United States. So many we are connected with the United States at so many levels, societally. I mean, forget everything else. People to people, we love the United States, right? Everybody wants to go to United. Yeah, so half, half the people who will not crack this exam will be like, let's let's go to United States for a masters, right? We love the United States, man. We wear clothes. Uh, build, uh, you know, manufactured by brand, manufactured in China, obviously, or I mean, clothes, India or Bangladesh, obviously. But, ha, uh, huh, these are American brands. Nike is an American brand, right? So, ha, huh, United States is so much part of our lives. I mean, do you think of Russian vodka so much? I mean, maybe some some people do, but, ha, huh, but other than vodka, I mean, do you ever think about Russia? How many times do you think about Russia a day? Every every time you see an iPhone, you think about the United States. That's the that's a different. Every time you see a computer, you're thinking about the United States, man. Everything that is so this whole uh, you need drivers in your relationship. That is something that you can actually focus on when you when you take country to country relationship. When you read the Oxford Handbook on Indian Foreign Policy, it's good. You read that, but try and find what are the drivers in the relationship. Try and think for yourself. And find out. See, this is not a this is this is not an exercise that will take forever. There are only few countries that are important. P5, neighborhood, Middle East, and Middle East not. I mean, Jordan is not important in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia is, UAE is, Saudi Arabia and UAE. I mean, they are very very important, and they are going to be very very important because of the crisis that is happening. What is so? What is what should India stand be on the Qatar crisis? We have so many people Qatar. We have so many people. We we want all all of them, right? We, we are one country where, uh, which wants. It is it is the Pentagon and India that actually wants everyone together. Pentagon because they, they want to supply arms to everyone. We we, we have to get our remittances from everywhere. And my Kerala brother would know the the pain of uh, of how important uh, Gulf is to the survival of my state. Like uh, Kerala economy is driven by uh, remittances largely. We don't have industry. Um, so every third. A member of a family is in, in the Gulf, in Kerala. Uh, for every three households, one one person will be in the Gulf in Kerala. So, huh. so it's very important for uh, our local economy. Not just in Kerala. Even I mean, now people from all over India is going. Uh, it is it is also good if you take a South Asian perspective. It's not just India. I mean, in our brother countries, Pakistan and Bangladesh, they they are also affected. They will show, oh my God, such a nice person. Things about Pakistan in a nice way. Maybe you'll score a brownie point. I don't know. Again, I I quoted Pakistan in a very nice way for our uh, union. There is this question on union territories. Huh. So 
uh, uh, this I'll come to this later. So, huh, so please try and find the drivers of relationship. Don't uh, there's no point in reading the history and knowing everything that happened, every arms deal that happened. So, first attempt there was this question on uh, Indo-US uh, relationship over the years or something like that. Huh, it was it was a question over the years. Um, I wrote some four pages. That last page, last line. Then I drew one line. I went to the top. I wrote so much because I I didn't have much to write for other questions. That's probably why I wrote so much. Please don't write. Uh, if there are four pages, uh, if there are four pages, write only three or three and a half pages. Don't fill space. You have to write all the questions. That's the that's very. Important. If you prepared well, you will have content for all questions. So, I went to such level of specifics that sometime in 1990s. Um, the people, some militants who had attacked in Kashmir had arms built in United States. There's this problem that happened. I wrote that point. I don't know, I mean, what's the point in writing that? These are events. These are one-off events to, I mean, yeah, you know that, right? You can show off somewhere else, but point is to score marks. So don't focus on such that, I didn't, I didn't, I, see, I was not trying to show off. I thought that was a genuinely a good point to score marks. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't have, the idea was not to show off. I thought uh, if I write that, I'll score. But unfortunately, I didn't. Right, first year, I got 93 for paper 2. 93 or 95. Uh, I think 95. Uh, but yeah, so don't focus on events. These are just one of events. You can, there is a driver of that event, which is the fact that there is a US arms industry which was selling to Pakistan at the time, which wants to find customers. We were just improving relations, uh, relations with the United States at that time. That's pro and our arms relationship with the United States improved only after the nuclear deal. So these are the drivers. So what are the underlying factors? These, this is what you should, you know, and maybe as an example you can write, but then you have to also watch what's the space. What is the amount of time that you have to finish? Huh. So for each of these countries, please try to find drivers of the relationship. That is the, that, that is the one thing you can do and rest is of course current affairs. What is happening? What are the, what did Raja Mohan say? What did Sham Saran say? Important people, what are they saying? Don't call me sir, call me sir. Huh? Call me sir, don't call me sir. Ha ha, I did, I did use MEA for so some things. Huh? Why? Why should you cover all the press brief briefings? Nee, but what do you get out of that? Other That's than, I'm ha -ha. Myself, uh, so I don't, I don't. So I, so if you ask me, if you, so imagine you are telling me. Uh, imagine I didn't know about this, right? I didn't know that there's something called MEA's website, and you are telling me this new information. I'm like, boss, I missed something great in my life. I'll go back and read. I'll start reading all the press briefs because of my interest. Like I said, my, uh, you know, too much of interest in IR. I would read, read all this. How, how can you write answers? After the visit, your uh, current affairs summary that, that you get from market or from coaching center, whatever, they'll have all the agreements signed in that visit. Why, why, why do you need to read all this? No point. No point. Maybe you're having lunch. You're having, uh, you're, when you're having lunch and you, have a, you are a YouTube addict like me, you can just put on that YouTube video where there, will, there are weekly press briefings. You can watch that. Maybe if you want, if you, if you if you're that badly, if you can't do this, you can't, you won't get sleep. Do this. What is the whole point in reading? I don't. I've never understood the point of reading this. If uh, somebody has a more informed opinion about this, maybe you should talk to them. But ha, huh, this is something I I didn't do because I found. There's one more thing. A lot of visits, no. The content is the same. They'll just change here and there. X Y Z. If you've read, if you read these briefings, a lot of things that that come in MEA content is the same for a lot of things. It's just that they change words here and there. Prime Minister, Vice President. So, ah, if you if there is an agreement on skill development, even everything will be the same. Except that India India's uh, organization will be the same. There, that organization will be different. Everything will be same. Content, everything will be same. Sorry, sorry. So, huh. Uh, so please don't, my, my uh, suggestion to you is please don't waste time, but if somebody else has a, has a more informed opinion on this, maybe you can take this. Because I didn't, I didn't spend so much time uh, looking at MEA. In, yeah. Huh, I used to make notes from Hindu. For GS it didn't, 
it was it basically became useless because at the end of the day i went back to doing what he did like uh, what he said initially i found other notes better than mine because in gs you you uh, in gs it's all about facts when from hindu when i make my notes for gs i don't gather all the all the relevant facts from for all the different topics ha ah, for political science i can make relevant notes Ah, if you can do that, it's great. But I, I didn't. I, I, I just couldn't do that, man. I, so it is better to discuss the magazine, the equation, or something. No, no. I, I never. So again, so like I said, this is for, if, if this is a GS specific question. GS. Um, see, the point is, you have to find where your comfort is. Like, for example, let me give you my example of Yojana, reading Yojana. So first time I read Yojana was something on FDI. So I took one month to read that one, one Yojana. Next, there was a Yojana on federalism. So I read because it was federalism. I forced myself to read it. Right? I read all the. I tried reading from first article to last article. I read that with so much emotional, uh, just thing difficulty. Then I realized that Yojana is not my thing. I will never read a Yojana again. I never read a Yojana again, ever. Just like first. So January 2015, I started preparing. I read one Yojana. This is. Uh, I think this federalism Yojana was February 2015. I read that also. Never, never. I, 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 I promise myself, I will clear this exam if I have to. But I am not reading a Yojana or a Kurukshetra ever again. I'll get this. I'll get this knowledge from Hindu. If I don't, it's okay. I am not going to reproduce the entire Yojana in my answers anyway. And I can't read so much. I mean, so many lines in Yojana, man. Like same thing, the same again and again. So much policy stuff. Not my thing. Now there is a friend of mine. She she absolutely loves reading Yojana. Like she can't sleep without reading Yojana. That kind of person. If you are that person, please read Yojana. If you think Yojana is, I mean, is a trouble for you, don't. Don't do things you don't enjoy. Huh. Uh, so I. Huh. Huh. So I used to do this. My I used to rely on kind of as book booklets, not not Yojana. I I I can't. I can't read. Huh. Ha huh, that I did but the problem was my notes became so huge and it became so unstructured i found current affairs the booklets that you get i found them much more logical and structured and they they uh, they they write pros and cons it's it's very structured no and they give give it so ha huh, i found that very useful so i i ended up wasting so much time making uh, current affairs notes for gs i couldn't revise anything so in case you're making notes please make make them briefly make them in a way that you can come back and revise If you make notes, you can't revise. It's as good as not making notes. So, so I, I mean, it's okay. You can I mean, don't. Uh, it's uh, you take any current affairs book. It's okay. Everything is just the same. I don't. I mean, it's not really nice to mention the. Ha ha ha. Take any any coaching center, any note. Ah, and one more thing. Imagine you have a uh, have the notes from one coaching center, any coaching center, here, there, anywhere. Somebody comes and tells you, "Boss, this is this is not good. Go for something else. That's just awesome." Somebody tells you this, right? Then you are like, "Oh, boss, what have you? What have I have to get that?" Uh, again, so this is a problem with people who have uh, people who have very limited resources in terms of money. People who have genuine difficulty uh, in terms of their parents supporting you. They, I think, are the luckiest ones because they can't afford to buy so many notes. And they're like, "Boss, I can't afford. Let me just stick with this." people who have that luxury of you know having little more money i'm not talking about the very rich people but ha huh, people who are like okay this is for a book i'll spend okay uh, those kind of people right i uh, i don't want to go for that movie but i'll spend because it's education right so parents are also like buy, buy this book it's okay those kind of i mean typical middle class sort of uh, thing right so they what they'll do is they'll go buy that book and then another day somebody comes and tells you that you know boss this is not good the other one is good you get three books you compare and then you will eventually realize after maybe many months <laughs> i mean likelihood is that you will not read any of the three that's the first thing then eventually when you start comparing and doing all this and you will realize that i think there's no there's not much of a difference anywhere so ha so whatever is i mean just go with the general trend if if there is one thing that is good that is generally being used by people do that don't don't think too much about this materials it's 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 common uh, in a lot of places so 
just take hold of one and go with it. I did that. I had one uh, one material which I was very comfortable with. I did that. I also gathered materials. I also did all this. And somebody told me that that material is good. I used to buy, but I used to buy and keep it for you know when I, I'll I'll come back to it. Boss, I'll come back to you when I'm done with the other one. I used to do that. Ha! Huh, that helped because I never had time. I had, so in the middle of all my YouTube video watching, I didn't have time for this. So that. Uh, huh, so, but please ensure you, you current affairs and all, just know I mean, uh, how much material can you study. You, the whole point of this exam is develop a basic idea about everything in the syllabus. You have three, four stock points for every question. Any question comes, you have three, four points. It could be constitution article, it could be a law, it could be some underlying factors. Some three, four stock points everybody will have. What is the value add that you will bring for the other sixth, seventh, eighth point? That's where the game is. That you will not get from current affairs material also. From current affairs material, you will get three, four stock points. Again, unless you have that kind of memory, you have read those, you are that diligent. You don't waste one second of a day to study that. You read current affairs in, out and out. Like, you know, so there are people who study like that for this exam. If you are that kind of person, yes. I mean, you can memorize everything that you ever read. You keep your sources to a minimum. You memorize each and every single line of everything that you've read. You're that kind of person, yes, maybe. Uh, maybe you have to get to that best material. You can do that. But huh, for otherwise, it's how much of rank do you want? You want to be an IS officer or you don't want, I mean, what's the point in getting num rank number one? Ah, you'll get a lot more felicitations and all that. Maybe they'll, so when the rest of us are sitting um, in the hall, they'll be sitting in the dais. They'll be, they'll be given cash awards and you'll be given that certificate. That is the only difference. But huh. if you care about these things, then maybe you should just. But uh, huh. I mean, I too wanted a rank inside 90. I wanted a foreign service. Any country I'll go. This is my objective. Rank inside 90. Uh, sorry, sorry, not rank inside 90. Uh, rank inside 110. Sorry, rank inside 110. That was my objective. 110. To reasonably sure that I'll get foreign service. Uh, huh. So this is my objective, rank in 110. But unless you have that whole notion of being in top 10 and all that, then the kind of studies required, I don't know. But again, if you ask people in top 10, they'll also say similar things that, you know, they, you can't plan for top 10, really. But huh, you can give that kind of effort where you can memorize every, there are people who, so I've seen, I've personally seen people, you discuss any topics, they will have six points, like out of their memory, they'll have six points. It's a different matter that many of these people don't make it because of this whole luck factor. I don't have six points for every topic. I'll have three, four points, but I'll have two, three other points that probably others can't say because of my extra reading, my documentaries, all that. So like I said, Polu Kolu, sorry, not Polu Kolu, Aira Kolu uh, case. Because of that YouTube video, I had some points which probably others would not have had. And they would have some points which I would not have had, right? I'll give you another example. There was this question on uh, National Capital Territory last year. Uh, Delhi versus center controversy was happening. So I am reading, so whenever I read a topic, I generally th uh, think of a possible question from that topic. And I missed the governor issue. I, w I knew that huh, this, this would be asked, but I didn't prepare an answer. I didn't prepare a mental framework where uh, if, the, if this question comes, this is the answer I'll, I'll give. Huh, I knew that the question was very likely, but I didn't make this mental map. So when this Union Territory Delhi issue was happening, Mm, so, like my, again, my YouTube video watching helped here. So, does anybody see the show called uh, Last Week Tonight by John Oliver? Huh, one person. Huh, you don't have to watch it if you don't watch it. You will not get questions and all that. But, huh. so, 2015, there was an episode uh, on Washington, D.C. How Washington, D.C. has a special status in the United States. They, are, they have restriction in terms of the laws they can pass. White House is in charge. Not even a Senate or some. White House has a lot of power over Washington, D.C in terms of how much uh, money they can spend, so many, so many of these things. Now, one year down the line, this Delhi Center controversy is happening. And I'm reading article, a lot of articles are happening on two, article 239A, this, that, center is right, no, Delhi is right, both are wrong. So many different views from so many people. Now, suddenly I remember uh, this, uh, this, art, this video of uh, John Oliver, where he talked about special status of Washington, D.C. Like was Washington DC has a special status. Delhi also has a special status. Is this the same for other countries? So I just quickly did a 10-minute Google search. I did. I checked out um, 
what is the special status of uh, what is the status of Canberra in Australia? Australian Capital Territory also has a special status in Australia. Uh, there they have restrictions on the laws they can pass and all that stuff. I checked out uh, Pakistan, Islamabad capital region or whatever it's called. Now I, I don't remember. That is only one of two union territories in Pakistan. The other union territories is federally administered tribal areas, which they had to give up because Taliban was nearly getting to uh, uh, Lahore, I mean, uh, Islamabad like few years back. So they had to just give it. It's not a voluntarily ceded, no, not like we made Delhi a union territory or uh, they had to just give the territory so that, you know, they, they could have that country in one, uh, they could maintain the unity and integrity of that country. So there were just two UN territories there. Then I searched Turkey. Turkey, mein is, uh, I think Ankara, Istanbul, whatever the capital city, I don't remember. Uh, there, there, there was no special status. Uh, so ha, I got these examples, right? So my approach to this issue was uh, that uh, ha, this capital territories have a strategic importance. So center, the central government will always have uh, a, a vested interest in ensuring that this city, this capital territory is controlled. In a more, so I gave the example of Washington DC, Australia and um, uh, Pakistan. So Pakistan put Pakistan in a positive, positive light, right? My, I'm, I'm good at ethics, GS4 also, and brotherhood and all that stuff. And this, this, I mean, on, but ha, huh, I gave this example because I could connect. So I'm connect. So I'm generally connecting whatever I watch on YouTube or whatever I read on uh, extra reading. So there are two things I read very uh, regularly: catch news and wire. Don't take this down. If you don't like doing this, don't do it. Do your own thing. Play basketball if you want. But, uh, spend your time the way you want, the, the extra time. So in Catch News, there was this article on nuclear power. Our power targets for uh, the Paris Accord, we've given power targets. Nuclear is some 15 GB or, uh, uh, G, uh, gigawatt or something like that. I don't remember the stats now. I had by heart it. This is also an article I read in 2015 when the Paris Accord happened. Just immediately after the Paris Accord, this article came. I read that. Now, uh, I think one or two months before the exam, uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, looking at Paris Accord. I'm studying environment-related stuff. Suddenly remembered that this, there's this article on nuclear power. I went back to that, and I read that article again. Basically, that article says, in the next 15 years, we plan to add uh, um, uh, enough power, which is more than what the rest of the world combined added in the last 15 years. So apparently this is very unrealistic. Anyway, nuclear industry, uh, to bring up a nuclear power plant is very controversial. It takes a lot of time. There could be protests. The, the gist of the article was uh, that uh, it is unrealistic. This year, the question that came was, what is the, uh, in GS3, the, I think it was GS3, there's a question. India's renewable energy targets, uh, how do you think they will achieve them? I give this example. So I'm always, always connecting whatever I'm reading. Documentary, I'm connecting. YouTube video, I'm connecting this. So it's like, you know, your one or two senses are finally opening up after long time of, you're always connecting things that you read. This is, I think this is the, this is the thing that helped me. So every question I had one or two brownie points like this everywhere, every, every single place. For example, there's this question on uh, Gandhi versus, um, Gandhi versus, sorry, Subhash, uh, what is, in GS1 there was this question, Gandhi versus Subhash Chandra Bose, is it? Huh. So there also my extra reading, I used to read some books on history in, before this. I used to connect whatever I read from outside here. So, in fact, last year, GS, there was this question on uh, what if Gandhi did not, uh, Gandhi did not lead the independence movement, how would, how would the, uh, how would our country look like? You can actually use your IR stuff in that. You, uh, so, when, when you read IR, you will read about decolonization and all that. Look what happened in every other country. Every other country, they were over, overrun by military dictatorships. Gandhi helped. So this is this is your this is completely from my Paul Science knowledge that I wrote that Gandhi helped build that nation nationhood. Uh, you know, sense of commonness, that respect for law. I mean, aversion towards army. You know, Gandhi always. I mean, army and police and all that was always something that Gandhi despised, right? I, I mean, all our independence leaders despised army. So when they came to power. Army was never kept in the structures of power. One of the first things that we did was we, you know, army, uh, army's importance reduced significantly. That ensured that there will, there will never be a coup. What happened to Pakistan? What happened in Myanmar? Again, it's very similar country, very uh, similar country, same imperial power. 
but there was a military component during their uh, independence struggle instead of a very peaceful movement so that military tendency sort of came back again but again i'm sure this scenario is different again because we have this ir sort of a thing i could write about so one other example i gave was about uh, julius nereri in tanzania he came to power he did not build a nation there he was he was the one western educated guy who i mean the european country sort ha huh, there's a good counter to capitalism sorry good counter to socialism if he's there it's good uh, his his version of socialism was a very uh, very weak and you know he was he was one of the people one of those people who the west was praising initially when he came to power he was seen as a very progressive person but he did not do the ground work that gandhi did gandhi ji did sorry gandhi ji did when uh, so gandhi ji did when he was leading the independence movement after after a few so after a few years he came up with disastrous economic plans which he did not consult with rest of the population nehru would not have done that right or or our leadership see please don't think that i'm one uh, party guy or anything of that sort i'm just generally talking about the leadership at the time we had an at least we had an elite consensus of what we had to do it could be could have been right could have been wrong I'm not so on the other hand here there was this one man who was trying whatever he wanted to try and he after he was a democrat who west was praising after few years he comes live on tv saying that i have in my powers to be a dictator yeah somebody asked him are you becoming a dictator i said he gave a television interview saying that yes i have all the powers in in my hand to be a dictator and there was a fa- there was there were disastrous famines in tanzania people so many people lost their lives the Julius Nereri his own daughter had to go to neighboring country i think it was kenya or somewhere to get soap and all that ha huh. his own daughter had to had to go and live in camps and all that stuff ha huh. so it was a disaster what happened in india we also not like we did great after independence but we we survived as a nation we had reasonable economic growth so ha huh. so these are the sort of brownie points that i could always come up with every question but i can't come up with stock points like people so that is what you have to figure out what what is your strength are extra points your strengths like so i have this extra reading i don't like sitting and studying too much where is your comfort level i mean if you if you listen to somebody's story and say he is very comfortable with coming up with these top points these are the basic books i read only from these books and i can deduce whatever um, i can from those books if you find his story attractive and you can't do it please don't follow it you find my story uh, more attractive but you can't follow it don't do it find where is your area of comfort that is the most important thing here ha huh. so yeah this is now i think i i think i've largely covered paper 1 a to uh, uh, all the four sections now if you have any any specific questions i think gs or any any anything ha huh. so again this is uh, writing practice is not something i enjoyed Uh, on a da- daily writing practice so i can't do insights the daily writing practice and all that boss i just can't do uh, gs also uh, again writing practice is something that i thought um, gs questions are so dynamic even the format is not something that you can you know i will write in this format if a question comes this is not something you can predict so i thought i will just keep my answer writing to a minimum wherein i'll understand where i'm going wrong so i took three tests and that too only for gs2 gs1 i didn't so second attempt i didn't take a single test for gs1 uh, no gs3 to it's so dynamic i don't know how you can prepare that paper other than reading newspapers gs3 i didn't take a single test gs4 i took so from wherever i took the test i took all the tests available for me gs4 is very important in terms of test taking uh, and i took only full length test not daily answer writing and all that full whenever i took a test i, I will take a full length test and in gs2 i took section test ir i took one because ir because our approach is completely different from uh, political science approach is completely different from gs uh, gs2 approach if you write like you write answers in political science they are like boss what is this guy saying this guys you will probably end up getting much like i did uh, 69 even if you get 69 you should consider yourself lucky if you write like john meer sharma said who john meer who is john meer sharma is he president of united states like wala who is he so ha huh. don't even think of scholars when you write so when you write your gs2 paper no just forget that you know you are a political science guy and you know scholars and all that 
I think this is a, I think this is a lively, large discussion. I'll just complete uh, his question. Um, your question was about answer writing. Uh -huh. So I took three section tests and I, I got the feedback and I analyzed and I realized where I was going wrong and I stopped. I just stopped because I, I had, and this is for uh, the GS. Now political science, I took 16 tests. I took tests from two places. One, I didn't submit. Uh, the other, I submitted. I took all 16 tests and the last eight tests I took as per the UPSC time schedule. Morning 9 to 12, then 2 to 5 or whatever the timing is. Huh. I took that, like that. So last eight tests, I so four days I kept just taking this morning one, evening, huh. so that you know I don't lose. I mean, how do I how do I experience that whole? Then also I messed up. So I'll, and now because you've asked the story, I'll just tell you how I messed up the political science paper. After G, the first test, uh, first paper paper. I don't know if you. I think I've said it in some other video. Uh, first test I took was uh, ah, paper one. Out of paper one, I'm coming out of the hall. I'm like, where did human essence come from? Why democratic world? Why you God? Why are you doing this to me? I prepared so well this time, and then, you, and then I had to write 35 marks in 10 minutes. I'm like, boss, this is like the worst thing. Uh, I prepared so much uh, for paper. paper one. Was my I thought I will score in paper one really well, and I will score decently in paper two also, and then I will get Tina Dami's marks. Right? This is my this is my uh, this is my objective. Right? So, ha. Huh. So. Uh, I am coming out of the hall extremely depressed, extremely angry, frustrated. I am like, boss, this is also done. I am anyway not going to give a third attempt properly. So it's end of road. Foreign services can, uh, now I will go to United States. I am thinking of all these things, right? After, um, and because of that anger, frustration, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't have lunch. Yes, uh, the day before, I don't even sleep properly. I am last minute studies. Uh, actually, last minute study helps for me. Generally, things I look at the last minute come from the paper. I have the, and this is something that works for me. Uh, so, GS2, just before entering the hall, I was studying Article 370. GS3, just before ent entering the hall, I was looking at insurance policy, that national, the new insurance policy, Puzzle be my usual. So, I don't know, this kind of, this has been working for me since, since childhood. So, something I keep doing. Right. So, so I'm, I'm leaving no stone unturned the previous day. I'm studying everything. I'm studying, I'm, uh, Cotillia, Cotillia and I studied so well, not a single question came from Cotillia. I am like boss, I refer to so many materials, Arth, uh, I, I had actually made notes from Arthashastra. I looked at Arthashastra and made notes from huh. uh, But that helped me in GS4. GS4 there is a question Cotillia, I, I think I just rocked it. Malab. Everything right from first, corruption, everything Cotillia said about corruption I wrote. Uh, so huh. I am coming so depressed and so sad, so frustrated, I don't have lunch. Uh, so I am entering the second paper exam hall. By the time I am, I started to lose it, right. Half an hour into the paper I am like, I am not, I'm, I'm not even perceiving the questions properly. I am just writing something, uh, still writing decent answers. One hour into the paper I have lost it completely now. Then after one and a half hours it's just autopilot. I am just, I am just looking, oh, I am looking at one question in the paper. Okay, I will answer this question. You have to select questions. Which which two questions will you choose? I chose one question and I start writing something else. Then I realize, what? Wow, this is not the question I want to answer. I strike it off. I did this for two questions. Can you believe this? You can't do something. This is like the worst thing that you can do with your life. Like you are preparing this. You you quit your job or you are not going for your job. You are preparing for this paper. You did one not having lunch could cost you so much. And I'm lucky to have ended up with one twenty. It could have been 94, man. I mean, like, so don't, I mean, so don't, I mean, your arrogance is okay, fine. Do, don't take it out on yourself, at least, at least just before the exam, just. Huh. So, so twice I had to strike off and start with new questions because the first question, huh, this is a good question, let me start reading. Then I realized that, boss, this is not, this is not what I thought. You really can't think if you don't have lunch and if you've not slept when the time is 3, 3.30 in the evening. Huh, so yeah, this is the big disaster that happened in the second. If I had lunch, I would have gotten 15 marks more. Only if I had lunch, 15 marks more, easily 15 marks more. Easily. Uh, rest is, uh, again, this is not a paper where I would have scored a 150 or a, you know, 160, 160 uh, basically. 
not a paper that I could have scored 160, but easily 15 marks more. 140, 145, something like that I could have scored. 144 and all. 60 marks, I could have scored easily. And then I'm in top 10. Then maybe I'll sit in the dice, right? People who have that kind of motivation. There's a huge difference between the life of a top 10 person and the life of a top 20 person and the life of a top 30 person. So, ha, people who have that kind of motivation towards this exam should make sure you have your lunch. Uh, ha. So, yeah, answer writing practice also involves taking care of your body throughout the... Ha, so you were asking me. Ethics. Ha, so ethics uh, is one paper I studied. I thought I studied in my first attempt. So for, by the time I had done, with, I was done with my mains, sorry, prelims, I knew that there wasn't much time left. I only knew constitution. I thought I knew constitution, but uh, the way questions are asked from constitution, I was not even prepared to answer those questions, right? So I'm thinking that, okay, I will study. Huh. So, I'll, so this is the last question. Uh, so I thought I will study um, uh, ethics and essay, and I will also cover whatever I can in political science, and I'll, I'll uh, go for my first mains. Again, disaster. Uh, ethics, I got only 73. I had taken tests, I had done answer writing, I knew there was something wrong. Now, after, so I'm in my second attempt. So what I did was, I start comparing my answers with answers of the toppers. So every test they will upload toppers answers and all that on the website. You can find that. Or you can buy stuff from the market only. Market, market also you will get this. I compared my answers with the uh, answers of the toppers and I realized that Pause. They are writing at a completely, I mean, much higher level than I am. Because I am not spontaneously creative. I am not spontaneously creative. I mean, people who are spontaneously creative, you know, they can just rock ethics paper. They'll, they'll have examples coming in their mind and all that stuff. So what I knew was this is not my strength. I had to, stu I had to sort of study in a mechanical fashion. So in ethics paper one, you have these questions like objectivity, neutrality. There are so many words. I have made standard definitions for all the words you can think of. All the words in ARC, I have a definition and I have an example. And I also compare. So neutrality and impartiality came last year. I had already done the comparison. So when that question came, I didn't have to waste a single second. Right from memory, I wrote that that uh, that question. So this is this is my approach. Even in case studies, I had solved so many case studies. I had taken ideas from so many toppers, I had copied so many ideas. So any case study, I know this is the approach, this is the example, this is the corrective. So any case study, you have to build a sustainable solution. So from ARC, there are so many uh, tools that you can use, Whistleblower Protection Act, False Claims Law, Integrity Pact, this, that, blah, blah, so many things from ARC. I will use all those tools. So examples, approaches, tools from ARC, I will use all that in an, in, in an appropriate way for every case study or that. So I have all these things memorized. In addition to that, the one thing that I did from my end, so I think I have a slightly higher emotional quotient. So I, can, I can bring in sentimental value into my answers. So when a question comes, I will try to make an emotional point or a sentimental point. I did this in interview also, generally. This, this is, I, have a, I, I have a high EQ. I am an emotional person. I feel very strongly about issues around me. May, may not express it, but ha. Huh. But when these views are moderate, I do express it. You know, I don't have extreme views on anything, but I feel strongly about whatever I feel. So when this question on land acquisition, uh, there's this question on land acquisition on ethics uh, paper last year. This is a GS question. You can write all the, there's already a policy in place, national land acquisition or rehabilitation policy. There's something already in place. Now, if you write that, you will score X, Y, Z. So I thought I had to do something more. So, so again, I, I just tried to bring in an emotional component. Maybe this worked, maybe this didn't, but I had to give it a shot. So I said, these people are being shifted from one place to another. They're making a sac sacrifice for the rest of the nation. It's okay, you have to give them jobs. They are uh, I mean, giving them jobs, giving them alternate land, uh, giving them money. This is not something that you're not, you're not doing them a favor. They are actually being uprooted from, I don't know, their ancestral lands. This is, this is a basic, you have to do this. So I said, this you have to do. What else you can do is you can actually, they are making a sacrifice for the rest of the nation. Why don't you celebrate these people in Republic Day? Call them in, to the Republic Day parade and felicitate them. Because they are, do, they are making the big sacrifice for the nation. Emotional point, right? Just, just, this is the only thing I could do in this paper. I am not spontaneously creative to come up. And, I, and this is not something that I, I have thought about this issue of land acquisition. And I feel 
that this is the right way to do. I don't think you should never acquire land. That's not. That's. The, I don't think we need land. We need. In, we need industry. We, we need land. We may have to acquire land, but do it in a humane way. Do it in a way that you know you make people happy about uh, making that sacrifice. So, ha. Huh, these kind of emotional points I bring in here. Here, there, interview everywhere. This is my. I have. This is. This is the person that I am. Ha. Huh, so that should largely come out if that comes out. But ha. Huh, even otherwise, you can. In ethics and all, you can pretend as if you are a very ethical person and still get marks. You can score. Right. Huh. But if you can always bring in what you have inside you, then you'll always be comfortable with yourself. And huh. so I generally didn't do anything that was outside my comfort zone because I cleared. I can say this, but huh. everybody will have their own journey and uh, their own experiences. Please make use of whatever you have: coaching, resources. Make use of sir for political science. That's that's very important. You uh, make make take, ask for help when you want, and take help. Don't if you if you can't figure something out, just ask. You can ask her. You can ask her. I mean anybody. Anybody go go out there. Talk to any person teaching political science. They'll help you out. If you want help, just go and ask for help. That is that is the other thing. And I and so many people help me across across through my preparation. I mean when when not for hundred people helping me, I would not have uh, got a rank. So ha. Huh, so that's it. I think we've. Already run out of time. Maybe the section says session was useful for you. Maybe it wasn't. Uh, I can. I'll give you my ID, uh, email ID. You can mail me if you have any concerns. Okay. You can write. Ah. Thank you, Siddharth. And now uh, we are ending this session as he given you a lot of suggestions. And that's uh, we are done for the day. Thank you.